all praises. <laughs> I just want everybody listening to know, man, that Hashem is, without a doubt, the only spirit in this universe that can make a world like this, plus other planets, plus other worlds, plus other things going on that we don't even see. But I like what Hashem says to us. He says, take your eyes, look up, and see everything I created. And then you'll gain a respect for Hashem. You understand? Right away, your heart should melt when you look at a baby being born. Forget about a baby being born. Just the fact that a baby's able to survive inside his mother's stomach is already beyond the miracle. You understand? And then after, of course, is another miracle. But we get used to these miracles. But the power of Hashem is deep. It's strong, man. That's why right off the bat, you have to give thanks. You have to be respectful. You have to be nice. You have to give him his due, you have to acknowledge him, you have to ascribe greatness to all of his works, you understand, plus he makes animals that give us opportunities to help them, also to use them, to feed ourselves, to maybe even buy furniture, Hashem gave us the animals to use like that, you understand, so just the whole system, the way the world is set up is crazy. But it's perfect just for a test. A human being with a physical body and a soul. And he's tempted in life by physical desires that are constantly trying to pull him away from God. But if he has the word of God in his hand, then he will always be drawn to the right path. But as long as he allows himself to be seduced by evil, he will constantly veer off to the left. And not only to the left, to the left in darkness where he's stumbling, he's grasping, you understand? But if he stays to the right, meaning he clutches tight the word of God till it shines bright with all of his might and all of his soul and all of his money, you understand? Like that. If he does that, then the road will be lit. It'll be easy for him to see where he's going. If God forbid there's any danger ahead, he can make preliminary precautions as to what to do. You understand? I remember somebody told me this. This is deep. So in the Tehillim, there's a bracha. You say it a lot in the davening, but I forgot exactly what number it is. Uh, but it's uh, the one about looking to the, you know, looking to the mountains. Who will help me? The God that never slumbers or sleeps. He watches you when you're coming or going. And he protects you from the sun and from the moon. So I remember from the moon, it says, you know, from the cold of the moon, you know, it gets cold at night, it protects you. So a guy said, no, that the moon, it shines. So sometimes your enemies can see you because of the light of the moon. So he'll protect you from that, that your enemies won't be able to recognize you or see you even with the light of the moon. You understand? I like that. That's deep. (laughs) Hashem is so deep, man. It's crazy, 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 crazy. Just you think... Today, I'll give you an example. Today, I went to go buy some food. So I went to this farmer's market that's next to my house. And when I went to go pay, I don't know, man. Maybe, of course, it's my fault what I'm about to say. But I'm going to tell you how the ego gets bruised sometimes quick. So I go to pay. And I put my card. I slide in with the chip. And then it says, if debit card, press yes. So I'm pressing yes on the screen. Like it's a touch screen, you know. So I'm pressing yes, yes. But I don't see underneath it, there's like a little box with an arrow pointing up, like I need to press the box. So I sit there for like out of 30 seconds. So this girl is looking at me. She doesn't even say anything. She keeps watching me press the yes like a tip, <laughs> like somebody who's not clever. And I keep pressing it and pressing it. And finally, she's like, oh, and she presses the button for me. So I look at her and she gives me such a dirty look. And I took my thing and I left. And I'm not going to front. My ego got bruised. And I was thinking to myself, I'm probably smarter than this girl. I'm probably more knowledgeable than this girl. I probably could teach this girl how to be a better person. And she got me upset. Why? Why would she get me upset? She got me upset. You know why? Because my ego got bruised. You understand? That's why, you see, to be on a level high that's really high, you need to be super humble. Like, if that would have happened to Moshe Rabbeinu, he wouldn't have taken it personally. He would not have taken it personally, bro. He would have said, no problem. So she thinks I'm an idiot. All right, that's her opinion, you know? You know you're not an idiot, so it shouldn't bother you. That's exactly what Moshe Rabbeinu would say. And you know what's crazy? I'm leading a lot right now about Vazot Abacha. 
דמעם נורא זו נזינו ניציבים, זאת הברכה. או, those are deep, deep פרשיות. Talking about a lot of curses, the dread curse, you know, the dread curses, all the curses from Egypt. <coughs> you have to really read the Torah to understand that God is not playing games, man. You really see, you don't keep Shabbat, you don't eat kosher, you don't do the right thing, you don't keep the laws of marriage. Nida, ta'arat ha-mishpacha. It's going to be curses on top of you, bro. It's 100%. You see people today who have kids that are off the derech, that brings them a lot of stress. Husbands and wives fighting from all this comes from curses. From where are these curses? From sin. I remember I read such a beautiful line. It said that a man and a woman who have a relationship out of sin, they will one day hate each other. And I don't need to say anything. If you're clever, you think about what I just said. And another great line that I heard that I read today that I love. It says the Mashiach will make the righteous repent. <laughs> That's deep. Because there's a lot of rabbis today that think they're super righteous and they're not. You understand? They're actually rude. They think they're better than people. They're big, big, big egos. So the Mashiach, they'll get saved, no doubt. But the Mashiach will make them repent. You understand? And that's deep and I like that. And I just want to talk a little bit about how society today is like Stone and Amora, bro. I don't want to tell you what happened with Stone and Amora when I jumped through sulfuric acid. That that place to this day, no plants could grow there ever. That's it. That, that land is cursed for eternity. And they resemble a lot of things that America stands for, man. Or that you see in the world in general. Deceitful, corruption in business, lying, stealing, no compassion. And of course, sex crimes. You know what I mean? And you see a lot of that here in America. That's real talk, man. I don't care what anybody says, man. Turn on the TV. You'll see tons of immodesty. Tons. I mean, it's scary, man. I'd be honest with you, bro. If you're a real religious person alive today, you should not own a TV. I'm just letting you know, man. One billion percent, bro. It's just, it's not worth it because it's just, if you sit down to watch TV, even if you kill two hours watching TV, you're going to see and hear things that are so anti-God, bro. It's like the Satan has one million percent control of the media, bro. That's really what it is. The Satan has his tentacles all over the media, bro. And he broadcasts exactly. What do you think? All these, God forbid, X-rated websites that are out there. Who do you think owns them? The Satan owns them. He uses people to do his bidding, but he owns them. You understand? He's coming here to destroy the world, man. He's coming here to destroy you. He's coming here to destroy Judaism. He's coming here... To make everything bad, you understand? But only through the power of God and through His wisdom and through His knowledge can you overcome temptation and defeat Him. You understand? That's the only way you're going to merit heaven, man. There's no way you can enter heaven if the earth's are is beating you. Plus, one day you're going to leave this world. Don't get so addicted to this world. You understand? Sometimes, God forbid, you have to close your eyes and think, maybe, what if, God forbid, I died right now? You'd say like that, you know what I mean? And you say, ooh, you get nervous. You say, okay, would I go to heaven? Would I not go to heaven? It's a good little test. Do it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying all the time. You get nervous, but <laughs> I suggest you should do it once or twice, man. And if you close your eyes and then think you're getting to heaven, God bless you. And if you don't, keep working on it. You know what I mean? Because Hashem will tell you right off the bat, man, as long as you try, you will get credit. And I'll give you just a simple example. If me and you went to do a mitzvah, we saw an old lady fall and we ran to go help her up and you jumped in front of me and even stole the mitzvah from me. Do I get credit? Absolutely. You understand? So I said, I tried. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, but I tried. I tried to keep the mitzvah. I tried to keep Shabbat. I tried to keep the things that Hashem asks you. It's not too much, man. Hashem is asking you. Let's think really. Like, what is He asking you? Let's really think. That you keep some holidays. Once a week you give them one day out of seven. He didn't ask you for three days out of seven. He asked you for one. Hashem wouldn't even mind if you went to the beach. As long as it's modest. You sit there, read a book. He doesn't care. He's asking you one day out of the week. Just be a good person in general. But one day out of the week. Dedicate to me. You know, pray a lot. Read a lot. And we don't even give that. You understand? Hashem deserves a lot more than we give him, man. And as a nation, we're really not nice, man. We treat each other horribly, man. I'm not going into my own personal stories, you know what I'm saying, disrespecting anybody. But I think we all can admit that Jews in general, like Jew on Jew crime is a problem. You know what I mean? I'm sure there's, you know, white on white, black on black, but I'm not concerned with that right now. I'm concerned with Jew on Jew crime, Jews thinking they're better than other Jews, 
Jews being disrespectful, Jews ignoring Jews, Jews not helping when they can help, Jews purposely giving people the cold shoulder for whatever reason. I mean, if you have a good reason, God bless you. And even then you should never do that because God says you see your enemy's donkey fall, help it, help it, help it. Why? Why should you help it? He's your enemy because God is telling you, trust me. If he's really your enemy and he deserves to be punished, I'll take care of it. You go through a mitzvah right now. The mitzvah is to help him. You know he's not going to touch you. Run, help him. And if he accepts you, you know, says thank you for the help, say you're welcome. If not, keep it classy. Keep it classy. Put your ego down. Make peace, man. Be humble, man. Moshe Rabbeinu was humble. Absolutely. David Amel was humble. Absolutely. Avram Avinu was humble. Absolutely. They said, I'm nothing but dust and ashes. David Amel, I'm nothing but a worm. You understand? What do you think? You think this is a joke? These are the greatest people that ever lived and they were humble. That's really the key to being righteous because when you're humble, you'll be grateful. When you're humble, you'll be appreciative. When you're humble... You won't talk a lot. When you're humble, you won't gossip. When you're humble, you won't look to start fights. You won't instigate. You'll do everything the right way in a soft, beautiful, classy. Humble is being classy. That's really what it is, man. Let y'all know that right now, man. Now, let me see, man. I got another five, six minutes left. Let's see if I can give you some really good stories, man. Well, here's a good story. I think it's Eliezer Ben Dordia, if I'm not mistaken. So he was a guy that knew every prostitute that ever lived. So finally he was one, one prostitute. And when they were done, she burped. And she said, just like this burp will never return. Eliezer Ben Dordia will never be able to return to God. That's what she said. And he took that really to heart. And he went outside and he was sitting in between two mountains. And he looked up and he was crushed. He felt so empty. So he said to the mountains, pray for me. Pray for me. I need you. Pray for me. So you know what the mountains answer him? Pray for you. We're too busy praying for ourselves. So he looked up to the stars. Pray for me. He looked up to the moon. Pray for me. He looked everywhere he can, begging some part of nature to pray for him because he was so broken. And they all answered, we can't pray for you. We're too busy praying for ourselves. And he got the message that he has to pray for himself. So he started to pray, and the Gemara says that he cried till he died. <laughs> the Gemara never lied. He cried till he died, and there was a voice in Shemaim that called him Rav Eliezer, or Alazar Ben Dordia, as if he was a rabbi. I hope I got the name right. If not, then a good Jew in the comment will write it, or I'll write it in the description. But you get the point. He merited heaven in one second. That was beautiful. That's a beautiful story. You understand? I'll tell you a really good story. There was one rabbi that went to go use like an outhouse. You know, back then they didn't have bathrooms like we do today. So as he goes there, right before he's ready to go do his uh, thing, some Roman soldier breaks in and kicks him out. So what is he going to do? He's going to argue with the guy now. So he goes to the corner and he waits to see what's going to happen. All of a sudden, here's a big bang. Boom. And he goes and he sees, I guess there was some kind of a bomb planted there, boom, exploded, and the soldier died and he got saved. So right away he understood that Hashem sent this guy and saved his life and sacrificed him to keep him alive. You understand how Hashem works? There was another guy that came, he went to sleep, and this rabbi was watching him and a snake came to bit him. And when the snake came to bite him, another animal jumped up and killed the snake. So when he woke up, he said to the, the rabbi, asked him, he said, what did you do? To have such a merit like that. I was watching you and God performed a huge miracle for you. So you know what he said? He gave us such an interesting answer. He said, you know why that happened, Rabbi? Because my whole life I always forgave people. I always looked to pursue peace. I always put my ego down. I always made sure that I was humble. And that I never had a problem with any Jew. And I always said, when before I leave this world, I don't want to have problems with nobody. So on the merit of that, I believe that I got saved so this rabbi smiled because he was like that's that's dope that's deep think about that that's very deep it's very deep man it's like I told somebody you want to hear something deep there were these big sages that they used to eat in these big wooden tables right and they would have this room just for poor people and they would feed the poor people in these rooms on these big wooden tables and you know what happened when they would die they would take that table and make their coffin out of that table 
as dope to always constantly remind them when they were alive, no matter how rich they were, that their end is going to be in a coffin, that this is just a temporary life and not to be too sucked in, like I said before, too addicted to this world. Got a lot of young kids out there addicted to video games, guys addicted to girls, girls to guys and all the other garbage that's going on out there. Don't fall for the trap. The satan is feeding you poison. I know it tastes so sweet and so delicious. I used to drink it. I know, trust me. But in the end, it brings you nothing but loneliness, heartache. You go against, I'll give you an example. You have relations before you get married. You're going to have a curse in your life. I'm sorry. I don't know anybody that didn't do that, that didn't have some kind of curse. God forbid, got a girl pregnant. God forbid, had, I don't know, whatever it could be. And, but it's not, nothing good is coming out of it, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm here to warn the kids that are growing up, please, man, be smart. Follow the words of God, bro, and you're going to see, man, that you're going to have such beautiful peace in your life. Like the Torah says, follow my word and you'll be blessed. You don't and you'll be cursed. It's so simple. When you do good by your father, he must pay you. It's just nature. It's the way God made the world. He himself is not going to go against his own nature. You understand? I love you, Hashem, and I appreciate that you give me the opportunity to give talks like this and help the people because it helps me as well. Amen. I love you.